What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 2. Today we are going to be plunging into the dark depths of the undead crypts, where we're going to be fighting one of Vendrick's most loyal knights, Velstat, the Royal Aegis, and we're going to be meeting Vendrick himself by the end of this episode. Also, it's a good thing I was able to sneak up on that guy, because I I think the pot I rolled through coated me in oil a little bit, so he could have lit my ass up. Actually, come to think of it, the one I just killed who was bearing the torch, I think he's actually not aggressive towards you. I think he actually follows you around to light the way. Not entirely sure if I'm recalling that correctly, though. This is a little bit of a gauntlet. This it reminds me of a slightly, slightly easier version of that run uh, through the the Hex Sorcerers in Ulisil. When you take the, uh, the elevator down to the bottom level and you're heading towards the Chasm of the Abyss. Not quite as intense as, as those enemies, but... <laughs> This requires a uh, little bit of tricky timing since there are so many of them. And they're spaced just right that getting around them can be a little bit tough. Uh, it's hard to line of sight all of them at the same time. So you really have to pick your battles. Oh, I'm not doing that. I can, now that the one in the left corner is dead, uh, use this pillar to line of sight the other two. That... E. That soul arrow is a little dicey, though. If these were the... Oh, shit! I forgot about the, the pyromancy, too! They have Firestorm. We have Firestorm that poisons? No, something else po had to have poisoned me. Yeah, that wasn't the Firestorm. So, let me regroup real quick. Wait, what are they saying? I never noticed them speak before. And they've just stopped. No, I can't make out what they're saying even when I'm not talking over them. I wonder... These appear to be uh, some kind of Grave Warden Finito... Uh, oh, there was a toxic mist going on. Or a poisonous mist. These appear to be some sort of Grave Wardens. Yeah, back up for the Firestorm. They wield a wide, wide variety of magic. They have sorceries... Hexes, pyromancies, I think I saw a miracle from one of them, too. And a poison once again. Gotta love all this leftover poison moss, though. Yeah, but if these were the Ulisil sorcerers, I would be dead like ten times over. Three of them in one room? Mmm, nightmares. I remember there was that one ambush room that only had two of them that I struggled with back in uh, Ulisil. Human. Do not produce light. So as you can see, these guys are not yet hostile to us. They won't become hostile unless you go against the Grey Warden's wishes and produce a source of light. Guardian of the Crypt. Countless dead rest here in peace. Cradled by the comfort of dark. Light only agitates. We have no need for it here. I am a finito. We weave death and watch over the dead. This task was granted to me by the one who gave us the first death. Countless souls rest here. Some of them from ages long ago. Some were rich, others poor, some wise. Did you come for him? The one called Fendrick. You will find him deeper inside. Many castle servants and the like have come to fetch their lord. But they rest here now, put to death by the king's own guards. Perhaps he's not in the mood for company. In the past, humans were one with the dark. The former king of light, he feared humans. Feared that they would usher in an age of dark. How queer you humans. How you go on. 
never separating truth from fiction. This place is welcome to all, provided due reverence is shown. Death is equitable, accepting. We will all one day be welcomed by her embrace. Tell me what you desire. Show me reverence, and I will lend you my hand. Use a couple of items I want to check out real quick. One is, there it is, Shield of the Insolent. Uh, formerly high-ranking clerics. <laughs> okay, nothing there. More stamina recovery, so it's like the new Grass Crest Shield. Ring of Thorns, Ring Granted Protection by Kreml, God of Struggle. Haven't heard much about Kreml or seen anything else about him. Here's the mushroom again. Saint Elizabeth devoted her life to helping the needy by concocting medicine and potions. <clears throat> Let's see, Solipede's warmth. Okay, nothing else. I am a finito. This time and we have already heard that from him. So Agdane is a finito. Remember the Mil Finito, who were supposedly a part of Nito, the first of the dead's order. Well, Finito appears to be Agdane's race, and it should also give you a hint who he's affiliated. Nito, once again showing up. Nito is getting more backstory in this game than he did the game he was actually in. And if you come back and talk to him later on, after you get the item we're going to get from Vendrick's chamber, he will give you his armor set and a katana called Dark Drift which is a katana that ignores shields. And interestingly enough, it says that the original wielder of Dark Drift <clears throat> delivered the first death. Agdane is a finito. Nito was first of the dead. And he also says that he's a grave warden charged with this duty by the one who gave us the first death. That could also be Nito, who is both first of the dead and the one who gave us the first death. Depends on how you interpret the name. It does seem like Nito would give the Grave Wardens, the Finito, their jobs, right? Either way, we are learning a lot about Nito in this game. Way more than I would have ever expected to learn. <clears throat> Which is cool, because one of my big complaints when I was going through the Tomb of Giants uh, in the Dark Souls 1 LP was it seems like there's so little information and so little backstory given to Nito. Also, we'll make this little drop down. And we'll set this brazier alight. And there are a couple of items down here. And I believe there's also... Is there a hidden bonfire down here, too? I can't remember. Uh, no, there is this chest, though which contains a soul vessel and a ladder right back up. Oh, and you know how Agdane uh, warns you not to light any torches or produce any sources of light? If you, uh, if you happen to strike a torch up, he will actually go nuts. He uh, will attack you and turn hostile. And that also connects to something which I just learned about in Dark Souls 1. By the way, isn't that fucking awesome? So many years in playthroughs and I'm still constantly learning new things about Dark Souls. Uh, if you cast light in Nito's boss room, Nito will flip out and spam Gravelord Sword Dance. Also, here we have the Nameless Usurper yet again. The Nameless Usurper now showing up here and in Drang Lake Castle. Still the same fighting style, same weapons, basically the same all around. Remember after looking last night, I mentioned an item description which talked about two of Vendrick's most loyal knights, one of whom was branded a traitor? I couldn't remember the item or who they were, but I just remembered. It's the Rebel's Great Shield, and it names both of uh, the individuals I'm talking about, the traitor and the knight who is supposedly still loyal. 
Raimi was the name of the traitor. Velstat was the other one. Velstat, by the way, is the knight who we're on our way to kill. <clears throat> he is the last step between us and Vendrick. Now, isn't it curious the Nameless Usurper shows up here in the crypt where Vendrick is and his former brother-in-arms are? Well, that's already... that's... Kind of a foregone conclusion if I frame it that way. Holy shit, those guys are no joke, but at least I got the ring, so... Eh. Not so bad. Not so bad, right? Yeah, like I'm falling for the same thing twice. Come on, step your game up. Monster who just killed me? Step your game up. Bunch of basic bitches. Oh yeah, come in here. Okay, let me tr first kill him. Okay, there we go. And then I'll get my thoughts back on track with what I was just talking about. Shit, I hate interrupting a thought like that. Uh, so, I was talking about the Rebel's Great Shield, which, men which mentions uh, Raimi and Velstat. Velstat it being the Royal Aegis, who remains loyal to Vendrick. Raimi being another one of Vendrick's formerly most loyal knights who was branded a traitor. And I was trying to connect the Nameless Usurper to Raimi, because it's suspicious to me that the Nameless Usurper shows up here in the crypt and in Drang Lake Castle, where the Queen, Vendrick, and Velstat are. I'm gonna abandon my theory about the Nameless Usurper being Lycia. I think the Nameless Usurper is Raimi. And I'm also not so sure the Usurper is so bad. I think the Usurper sent something was off about the Queen, Nishandra, and she had him branded a traitor. That doesn't really explain why he attacks us, though. Blah. Gotta work on that theory a little bit. You know who else Raimi could be, actually? Oops. Uh... Oh god, I forgot about the Lord of the Rings wall ghosts. Uh, Raimi could also be the Pursuer. The Pursuer favored a crow, and a crow is explicitly mentioned as an omen of death in the Rebel Great Shield... Uh, the Rebel Great Shield's description. And the Pursuer is out to atone for some kind of sin. Maybe that Sin was betraying the King in some way. If the Usurper, Pursuer, and Raimi all happen to some, in some un impossible way to be the same person, that'd explain why the Usurper attacks you. Also, I wasn't going to spoil this, but on New Game Plus, two Pursuers show up in the throne, the throne room in the castle, and that seems kind of relevant. Uh, so I'm not going to be exploring the junction that I just came from because it is full of those really, really nasty uh, pyromancer slash grave warden enemies and they scare me too much right now. Also, you see these giant statues of those in the background. They kind of look like ring wraiths. God damn, that's cool. I like that view. The switch I just pulled will uh, open up a shortcut, a little bridge across, so if we die and go back to the bonfire, it's no big deal, since it's just a short walk back to this grand hallway. Uh, the room that I just came from, the junction that I'm not going to explore... Oh, shit. I'll explain why that it's bad in a second. Uh, that little junction with all the graves contains the Mace of the Insolent, which is a pretty cool mace if you are interested in a kind of a hybrid melee caster build, because the Mace of the Insolent acts as a not only a melee weapon, it also acts as a chime, so you can use hexes and miracles while you wield it. <clears throat> now, the reason that I immediately homeward boned and rested at the bonfire and reset that situation as soon as that guy attacked the bell... If you let that happen, if he rings those bells, those Grave Warden enemies, or whatever they are, that uh, messed me up so bad and killed me the one time, you get about five of those spawning at statues littered all throughout the hallway. So this time I'm going to do a better job. Yeah, there we go. 
of not letting him hit that bell. Also, if you travel about halfway down the hallway and you don't deal with that undead, he will ring the bell anyway and summon all of that. He will bring a storm down upon your ass. And it is not fun trying to weather that storm, so nip it in the bud. So now that the bell is not ringing and extra enemies aren't being summoned, all we have to deal with are these trident-wielding knights. And you mostly have to fight them two at a time, so it's not too, too bad. The ones, the two at the top of the stairs are a little bit stubborn, so that's kind of a pain. But it's not nearly as bad as trying to clear this room out with five of those Grave Wardens. I think that's what they are. Uh, enemy names elude me. So I'll try to pull them apart now. Feels like that trick doesn't work too much. It feels like it's very difficult to pull individual enemies with bow shots. Because once you aggro one, even if it's a direct way by doing damage or something, it seems like anything adjacent to the one you hit will just aggro with it. Uh, luckily, one of them backed off a little bit. So this should be an easy kill. Now, the two at the top of the steps here are a pain in the ass because they don't budge. So, not only is it hard to run past them, it's hard to pull them. I could do what I love to do so much and uh, fire arrows at them all day and do my uh, fast forward while sh spamming arrows deal, but luckily I managed to get him to step off the edge so I can take him down one on one and then I'll do the same thing with his buddy. I feel like, for the most part, Dark Souls 2 is the easier of the three Souls games, with the exception that there are a lot more situations where you are forced to fight multiple enemies at a time in this one. And that's just something that you didn't have to deal with as much in Demon Souls and Dark Souls. And it's something quite difficult to adjust to. Now we will go after Velstat, the Royal Aegis, after a little bit more prep. Um, is there any way I can keep my roll speed and get a little bit of armor out of this? There we go. Yeah, that seems fine. Also, I'm wasting time on my great magic weapon. That's pretty cool. That kick is dangerous. Also, uh, do not ever underestimate his range, especially when he does his jump back attack. Uh, I've very often gotten hit by that. It oh, I thought he was about to do it. I've gotten hit by that so often just because I'm underestimating how far it reaches. Uh, you're bound to see it sooner or later in this encounter. So, Velstad here is another one of uh, From's recurring characters, and he wields a recurring item. Uh, the names have changed, but he's clearly this game's version of Garl Vinland. There it is. That reaches really, really far. There it is again. See? See how far that reaches? Yeah, he's clearly this game's equivalent of Garl Vinland or Paladin Leroy. And he also uses the equivalent of uh, Grant or Brammed, except, uh, what the hell is this hammer's name? You can trade Velstat's soul for it, but I can't remember what the name of it is. It 
doesn't have quite as catchy a name. It's also a little bit curious that you can trade his soul for a miracle called Sacred Oath. Now on the surface, that makes sense because he is fiercely devout to Vendrix, so Sacred Oath, yeah, kind of makes sense there. What's curious is that if you read that miracle's description, it says that it was made by people who once worshipped the old sun god, Gwyn. Okay, when he starts doing this, he is either buffing up, or if you're in front of him, he will cast a very, very nasty projectile at you. And I believe it's a mix of magic and physical damage. That goes like halfway across the goddamn room. It's nuts. Okay. Uh, let me get behind him real quick. I don't want to get hit with that. That would have hurt very badly. So as you can see, he's not too dangerous of a boss, especially... Uh... If you have a nice high stability shield like the Garm Great Shield, I've, I've been going to the well a lot with this Garm Great Shield. It, ah oh man, it's such a good shield, underrated one to boot. Not only does it have 100% fire resistance, very very high stability, which is uh, again the measure of ooh how much or how little stamina is consumed when you block. So a shield with high stability will consume less stamina blocking hits. So aside from his magic attack and him being uh, surprisingly quick, he's not too dangerous of a boss and uh, I saw a little gap. You see how much damage that attack does though. Shit! I was worried I wasn't going to recover in time to block that. Like I said, surprisingly quick for such a big, lumbering bastard. For him to be really, really dangerous, though, you have to kind of be uh, underestimating him. His range, his speed, and his magic are what will do you in. Two? No, just a single hit on that one. Damn it. Whenever he does... Uh, I hate when he only does one hit. I wish he would always do his full combo. Because if he only does one hit of his full combo, I don't retaliate because I'm worried that the follow-up swings will come. That's something I'm really bad at, is... Not necessarily learning uh, when bosses are telegraphing their attacks, but the combos in particular. I never know how to tell if... For instance, if a boss has a three-hit combo, I never know how to tell when the follow-up two, uh, second and third hits are coming. The first one's easy to spot, but I always miss a bunch of easy openings on bosses when they only swing once out of a possible uh, three, because I can never spot when the second and third hits are coming. Now that Vendrix Royal Aegis is most loyal of knights even in front of uh, the Mirror Knight himself. Now that he's dispatched, let's go meet the King. That, ladies and gentlemen, is King Vendrick. Hollowed, decrepit, naked, wandering around in circles, with no purpose and no direction, oblivious to our presence. This is the great and powerful Vendrick, who we have been seeking out for the entire game so far, and he is guarding the King's Ring. Let's take a look at that ring. Maybe that will give us some clues about why Vendrick is like this. Powerful soul is like a curse, and Vendrick, King of Drang Lake, used a powerful soul to keep, it, to keep the curse at bay. King Vendrick sought greater souls and made the giant strength his own, but even still, the curse overcame him. Wearing this ring will open up those special doors, the King's Gates, the first of which we saw 
back in the forest to fallen giants. The king. Use it to gain passage through the king's gate and venture to the far east. Bearer of the curse. If you are to be the next monarch, then one day you will walk those grounds without really knowing why. So the Emerald, the Emerald Herald just suggested that we are to be the next monarch, which doesn't sound a whole lot like breaking the curse. It sounds like keeping it going, almost. But we are just going to have to wait until next time to learn more about Vendrick and the curse and the role we have to play in all of this, because we are unfortunately out of time for now. So thanks for watching everyone, take it easy, have a good one, be sure to tune in next time, and be sure to tune in for the next episode, and I'll talk more about Vendrick and the Curse, because we are now getting into some really, really cool territory, and I'll also be heading into the keep of King Vendrick's brother, Lord Aldea.